talk to you in the good and this chapter, but it looks good and it's like a ton of like the process. Um, it's everywhere. It's a pretty deep process. Yeah. To I'm sure once we get in, we're going to see lots of giant cells. Yes. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm trying to hallucinate to see these cholesterol clefts, I'll be honest. Well, there are some cracks in here, but I'm not 100% sure if these are really cholesterol crystals or just clefts between the collagen. But I thought I did see some. There, Probably some of these are cholesterol crystals, but I don't know. I believe you. <laughs> no, don't believe me too much. I'm not totally convinced myself. But but in any case, I think the, the pattern overall, even without cholesterol, which you don't always have, but even without free lipid, the pattern here is pretty good. For what? So sorry, my, my volume's cutting out, so I'm trying to listen in um, clear up the but I, this looks like an issue just with these patterns. Yeah, good. So this this pattern, I, I would say, is kind of, it falls into the, the necrobiotic, palisaded necrobiotic granuloma pattern, right? Where you kind of have zones of necrosis slash it looks kind of like necrosis but when we go closer it's really like dead and degenerated collagen that's again necrobiosis is like a fancy way of saying collagen that's devitalized well collagen's already extracellular how it's not even alive right it's a it's a extracellular protein made by fibroblasts so how do we know that collagen is dead when it's not really alive to begin with well the way i think of it is that usually collagen has fibroblasts with it, right? So the dermis normally has a, a normal population of fibroblasts. But here we've got a bunch of collagen with like basically no fibroblast nuclei. So that's what I think of is that when you have, it's pink and it begins to lose the fibroblast, that's when I start thinking that's like necrosis of the collagen or necrobiosis of the collagen. People have pointed out that that word is kind of a misnomer and I agree, but it's a word that we've been using for a long time and I think is, is understandable at least. So this, this dead or degenerated collagen layered in between areas of histiocytes that are kind of lining up and forming like a fence or a barrier around the dead and dying collagen. That's the necro palisaded necrobiotic granuloma pattern. We see that in granuloma annulare. We see it in rheumatoid nodule. We see it in necrobiosis like poietica diabeticorum. And we see it in this entity, NXG, or necrobiotic xanthogranuloma. So to me, NXG, which by the way is vanishingly rare in my practice, I think I've seen one or two cases in 12 years of practice. Uh, I've thought about it a handful more times, but only I think once or twice have I actually seen like the real deal in practice. Um, so it's usually the dermis and or subcutis is involved by this palisaded necrobiotic granulomas. It has a similar appearance to NLD to me. It has a lot of overlap because it's got layering of of histiocytes, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and necrobiosis. The big differences are number one, clinical, which I'll talk about in a second. Number two, these massive giant cells. That is to me the most useful clue. If it looks like NLD, but you have huge multinucleated two-ton giant cells or foreign body giant cells, then think of NXG, okay? Clinically though, NLD, necrobiosis lipoidica, is usually on the shins, right? The, the lower leg, um, sometimes a diabetic patient, sometimes not. NXG, this entity we're looking at here, necrobiotic xanthogranuloma, has a predilection for the face, particularly around the eyes, like 80% of patients. I, I did some reading on this last night because it's one of these things that I only rarely see, so I don't have all the data points in my head, and I have to refresh it from time to time. So it um, about 80% are on the periorbital area. They also can be on the other parts of the face, on the neck, on the trunk, but less common to see on the extremities. And they start out as papules that then expand and be turned into nodules and then plaques. They have a yellowish xanthoma-like appearance uh, and are sharply circumscribed. Sometimes they ulcerate. And then these patients, what's the importance of recognizing this disease? What else do these patients have sometimes? Amyloid. Yeah, they can. They could. They could have a. Oftentimes, they have a paraproteinemia, which can go hand in hand with multiple myeloma or amyloidosis, right? And uh, so, the paraprotein is usually IgG kappa most of the time. And these patients uh, may not actually meet criteria for myeloma or amyloidosis at diagnosis, but sometimes they develop a plasma cell abnormality 
uh, even years later. So these patients need to be followed. They need to be checked for multiple myeloma or amyloidosis, and they need to also be followed over time to make sure they don't develop it eventually. They also may have anemia, low white cell count, high um, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, as you can imagine, with all this inflammation going on. And sometimes it also can have an association with other types of lymphomas, like other B-cell lymphomas, including uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, small lymphocytic lymphoma, CLL, SLL. And so what we see is we have zones of necrobiosis. Here's some actual proper necrosis, and then here's degenerated collagen. Layers of histiocytes with tons of giant cells. And usually you will see cholesterol clefts, which I think these spaces are. Some of these I think is artifactual cracking, but I think some of the, the needle-like empty spaces here probably represent uh, clefts made by deposition of extracellular cholesterol and other lipids. You can have frothy lipid material. Probably there's some lipid in here as well. This kind of bubbly, frothy, cleared out spaces. So the, the, the necrobiosis and palisading with the giant cells and with the free lipid is what helps you, as does the clinical. And, um, and then uh, those patients, like I said, they need further workup. Oh, there, this was the area that I thought was probably the better. I think this is pretty good for cholesterol crystals here. All right, so this is a really nice uh, example and a, a very nice uh, ample biopsy, I'd say. Uh, a nice example of NXG, necrobiotic xanthogranuloma.